Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In the last lesson, you learned all the different parts that make up a spreadsheet, which means now you can learn how to use one of the most important features of spreadsheets, formulas and functions. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use formulas and functions to enhance your spreadsheet calculations. First, you'll learn about the symbols used to perform calculations with formulas, since they're a little different from calculators. Then you'll learn to link cells so that if one number changes, all of the others will update automatically. Finally, you'll learn the difference between formulas and functions and why functions are way more useful. One of the biggest advantages to using a spreadsheet is that each cell can act as a calculator. These automatic calculations are called formulas. Before you type in the math though, you have to remember to begin the cell with an equal sign. That tells the spreadsheet, this cell should be equal to the result of this mathematical expression. Then you can type in whatever expression you want, hit enter, and voila, it does the math for you. When typing expressions into a spreadsheet, you have to know what symbols to use. Adding and subtracting are easy. For addition, you just type in a plus, which is shift equals on most US keyboards. And subtraction is just a minus, which you use the hyphen key for. To multiply though, you can't use an X. The spreadsheet will interpret that as text or possibly the name of a cell. Instead, use the asterisk. On most keyboards, that's shift eight. For division, use a forward slash. That's the same key as the question mark, but you just don't press shift. Just Imagine it like a fraction that's toppled over on its side, eight over three. If you need to type an exponent, use the caret key. That's shift six. Whatever number comes after the caret is treated like an exponent. But what if you need multiple things in an exponent? Then you have to group everything together with parentheses using shift nine and shift zero. Using these tips, you'll be able to use spreadsheets like giant calculators. But that's not even the best part. By linking to cells, you can create automatically updating formulas. Say I need the value in A2 to always be double the value in A1, and for A3 to be three times as much. Anytime I change A1, I would have to manually change the others. But that means I'm having to change three cells instead of just one. And on a big spreadsheet, like a budget spreadsheet, changing one cell means that you have to go searching for all the other cells that have to change. But there's an easier way. Linking cells inside formulas. It's really easy to do. Just type a formula showing the relationship, but use the cell's name instead of its value. Notice how the spreadsheet has A1 highlighted both the cell and the name in the same color? That's how you know the linking worked. Now, this cell will always be calculated as A1 times two. And now this cell will always be A1 times three. Now, any time I change A1, A2 and A3 will change automatically. Linking in formulas will be necessary for a working budget. If your income or one of your bills change, you just have to edit that one number and let the formulas do the rest of the work. But you know what's better than formulas? Functions. A function is basically a long, pre-coded formula that you don't even have to type out. Here's an exaggerated example. If you needed to calculate a standard deviation, and you'll learn what that is when you take statistics, this is the formula you'd have to write out. Hold on, I, uh, I need a little bit more room. Ah, uh, there we go. That is the formula for standard deviation. Do you wanna type all that out? I sure don't. But luckily, we don't have to because we can use a function 
instead of a formula. Make sure to use the equal sign, then type the function command, stdev. We have to tell it what cells to use, so we use an open parentheses, name the range of the cells. Notice how now it highlights the range from A1 to A6, and close the parentheses. And just like that, it knows to calculate the standard deviation without us having to type that long formula. And that, my friend, is the magic of functions. Even though budgets don't usually require a standard deviation, there will be plenty of opportunities to use functions. For instance, if you need to add up your income and expenses to find what's left over. And trust me, adults have a lot of expenses. You could just type in a formula that adds up all these cells, but that would take a while to type out. Instead, we can use the sum function. It does the same thing, sums up all the values in that range, but it's much shorter. And there's an added benefit as well. If you realize you forgot one of your expenses, like HOA fees and had to insert an extra row, the function automatically knows to readjust the range. See how now it ends at C6 rather than C5? A formula where you linked the individual cells wouldn't know to do that. Use functions whenever possible to save yourself a lot of headache. There are a lot of functions you can use in Google Sheets. If you'd like a list of them, you can look under the Insert menu where it says Function. But you won't understand a whole lot of what you're looking at. Most of these functions are used by professional accountants and data analysts. In the next lesson, I'll introduce you to a few functions that are actually useful to a regular person just trying to build a good budget. See you then. Hey.